So that's a, actually an awesome question because it's actually sort of up for debate and there's a, a debate raging on the internet about what a data scientist is. As near as I can tell, technically, it's a statistician who can program or a computer scientist who knows something about numbers. At least that's the technical answer. But what I really think it is is somebody who has the critical thinking skills to be able to wrangle data, to make sense of data, and then just ask the right questions of the data be able to use their skills, either computing or mathematical, to help get the data to actually answer those questions. <laughs> we certainly have more than we can handle, but I don't think there's ever a problem with having more data. You never know what questions you're going to want to ask in the future, and I certainly wouldn't say that we need to clamp down on getting data. The one sort of side note to that, though, I'd say, is people are really gaga over the idea of big data. And yet, a lot of times, the decisions that you need to make, at least when you're starting to understand some of your business practices, like are we having an effect, or uh, what, how are people reacting to one of our services, you don't necessarily need a huge amount of data. There's a lot you can say with quote-unquote little data, small data. So I think the nonprofit sector is going through a renaissance when it comes to data, much in the way the private sector is. Uh, we're seeing more and more nonprofits starting to think more cleverly about the ways they can use data to impact their programs. Um, for example, the Grameen Foundation is incredibly data-driven. They have a number of programs that use cell phones to improve the livelihoods of people in developing nations. And they've realized that tons of data comes out of those programs. And so they're using that data to help them guide interventions. They're building interactives from it. So we're seeing a lot of sort of forward thinking from a lot of groups from like Grand Main Foundation. There's clearly a wide range and there's a lot of people at different levels, but we're starting to see this real push from the nonprofit sector to start using data to guide their programs, understand what they're doing, and overall maximize their impact. So it's a pretty exciting time. So I think there are a lot of steps that nonprofits could take to make better use of their data, but one that I see that's actually one of the critical first steps is thinking about data as a process, not just data collection so that you have the data and maybe have it in an Excel spreadsheet that lives on someone's hard drive and there's another one that's in someone's email, but actually having something like a centralized database or a way that you consistently deal with data will go a really long way to, be, to build a foundation actually be able to ask questions and make use of your data in other ways. One of the most common things we say we hear, no time or resources to deal with data, but I think that's sort of like saying you don't have time or resources to deal with your finances. And I know that every nonprofit has gone through and has a financial officer, deals with their finances. It's just part of the growing pains of being a business. You can say that all you want, but that's kind of the equivalent to putting your head in the sand. It's like people saying, we don't have time for a website. It's just the way of the future. It's the way things are going. And I would think the companies that uh, get on that quickly and just go about now getting either data resources on staff or partnering on that are going to be the ones that succeed and leave the people who are saying things like that behind. That's a very legitimate concern. There is sort of a good news, bad news answer to this. The good news is that it's becoming a lot easier to work with data. You don't have to have a PhD in statistics to necessarily build some really crazy model to understand your data. Maybe it goes a long way just to have a visualization of your donations over time. So you can just start to understand little things, even anecdotally, like, hey, when we send out an email blast, do we actually see an uptick in donations or don't we? Just starting to bring a little bit of that science in can go a long way. And there are increasingly more and more tools and more and more data out there that let people who aren't necessarily trained in this to do that on their own. So I would say, fear not about wading in. It's a very comfortable environment. There's a lot of people out there that are willing to help you learn. And there's a lot of tools that can get you working with this data very quickly. Now that said, the bad news part of that is, if you do want to go in and actually start doing statistical tests, really measuring your impact. That's something we hear a lot. People want to show that they're having an impact. You can go a long way with some of those available tools, but to really go further, you may want to turn to an expert in measurement and evaluation. 
Uh, we at Datakind specialize in dealing with statistics and looking at things like that, so that's one option, but we're just one of many, many groups out there that are helping nonprofits better measure and evaluate what they're doing. So if you want to go that route, if you really want to have something that's statistically solid, at some point you're going to need to get those skills either in-house or from someone else in the same way that you probably had to do that with tech skills or like building a website, to use that example again, or finances. Um, but there's a lot you can do just to begin to explore that data. So I really want to emphasize that good news note because a lot of the challenge of a data scientist is really just getting the right questions. And to do that, you just need to be able to interact with your data, see those funny, interesting things in there that give life to what you're doing.